to criminal justice and citizen citizenship and the rule of law mr akre has authored various articles including revolutionizing the legal industry the convergence of artificial intelligence and law and has been involved in editing numerous books and has provided chapters for various books mr ishan will present his insights on generative ai's effect on the 21st century legal system over to you mr akre so good afternoon everybody greetings from india first of all i would like to thank uh, university of central punjab lahore for inviting me in this esteemed international conference on artificial intelligence in and the legal system i would li like to also thank convener of this international conference do uh, dr hadia awan ma'am and secretary dr shastha anwar ma'am for inviting me as a keynote speaker in this esteemed conference so first of all i would like to start uh, this session by introducing you what do you mean by artificial intelligence or generative artificial intelligence basically generative artificial intelligence uh, is focuses on the algorithms where new content is being created uh, and this content means text images videos and which is based on the patterns and data inputs moreover the content which has been created through ai is not created is, is uh, data is not created by human but it's created by non human uh, created to non human intelligence and this data is created from various softwares like uh, chat gpt chat gpt4 google bard and, and are initially in these ai uh, websites or ai softwares are trained on the large data sets and computing power and after getting trained from n number of data which has been taken from the various online sources these ai start creating their own data now the issue which uh, today or uh, which today i want to address through this uh, conference is that what what is about the data which has been created from ai by analyzing the data which has been pre loaded in this ai the data which has been pre loaded in this ai is the data of some individuals who have stored this data through the uh, through uh, various uh, internet sources now issue is about the copyright if some uh, copyright comes in when somebody puts his own efforts to create some uh, literary uh, literature work and if somebody is copy that literature work without adding his own content in it that violates the copyright how ai is violating this copyright broadly there currently copyright law grants right to the author of protected work the focus is on protecting the author's intellectual and personal relationship with their work and to ensure that authors maintain control over the exploitation of their work copyright laws come in action but the issue is when this output is coming out from ai the question arises to whether these outputs can have an author as the composition of the output is not done by human mind but it has been done by through an ai system and how this ai is infringing the copyright first of all ai is infringing the copyright through the web scraping what is this web scraping it means taking users data without the consent of the person it has been seen and it has been published in various international newspapers in various journals uh, journals also that open ai has scraped over 3000 billion words from the internet including different articles websites books post including person information and these all data has been obtained without the consent of the person now the issue arises that is that if i am using somebody's data first of all due consideration should be given to that person and i can i have to add some my own uh, experience i would say some my own content to the uh, copyrighted data if i am not adding something but i'm just expressing the initial copyright data it totally violates the uh, copyright and that has been done by the ai second aspect is nowadays you can see that various people are uploading their uh, photos their videos their texts their blogs and in their own name at various social media platforms what ai is doing ai is taking all that data and after taking the data they are morphing the content Do, nowadays you have also seen that there is a new concept that there is a, a new ai i would say it is an ai offense where photos are being mocked 
and it morphed in such a manner that an individual cannot even identify that whether the person standing is a real person or it is an artificial person or then a morphed person that shows that ai is infringing or intruding the rights of privacy of an individual third aspect is that in every society we can see that uh, privacy of children is very important now uh, in various societies what people are doing that they are giving their uh, children their mobile or uh, computer laptop and by using that mobile laptop and computer what children are doing they are you uh, know putting their own um, information uh, in that uh, so uh, in various at various uh, social media platforms at various internet sources and uh, through that uh, sources ai is intruding their right to privacy fourth is about the misleading data it has also been seen that uh, what ai is doing ai is uh, ai softwares have produced false or inaccurate paragraphs when they are asked to cite a specific author's work such as poem or other uh, arc- uh, articles or some other uh, uh, journal in various journals such false result causes misinformation to the public and also hampers the moral light of the author by distorting their work if i have if i have read some research paper after in a research paper uh, various people we do during our um, uh, phd's also that we have to do literature work and the literature work we have to cite the author from where we have taken the inspiration of where we have taken some uh, information but what ai is doing ai is uh, doing that ai is taking the data of some x person and they are citing mr y person that surely violates the right of privacy of that person also it infringes his copyright and by not giving due consideration to that person third aspect is about the data protection what is the data protection generative ai systems generate large amount of data including image text speech video code business plans and technical formulae training testing uploading analyzing consulting or otherwise processing such input and output data requires various levels of protection i have put my data on the online sources and now it is necessary that such data needs to be protected but what ai is doing ai is intruding into that data and misusing that data which is affecting individuals life such level of protection depend on the type of data with a significant distinction between the personal and non personal data if it is not a personal data we can expect that such data can be taken but if it is a personal data related to name information of person's life uh, uh, what is uh, what is the, his interest or her interest so by taking that personal information if ai is misusing that data there is necessity that that such data needs to be protected there are certain data protection principles which i have seen that first is the transparency if any ai software is uh, uh, allowing uh, his uh, 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 consumers to take uh, or to take certain data from the ai it is necessary that there should be a transparent policy uh, by that uh, uh, ai software in that uh, privacy policy and statement organization should consider describing in a straight forward language the use and the purpose of ai system and explain the logic behind the ai powered automated decision and highlight risk for the individuals sensitive data several in several states it has been seen that impose increased diligence obligation to organization when it comes to the personal data these obligation can include things like age verification stricter legal grounds for processing or even banning processing what happens that if i have given my if i uh, given my data to some online source what ai is doing ai is taking that data from that online source and misusing it so it's better that every uh, platform should provide a transparent uh, policy that this ai can work up to this level so there should be transparency so that consumer should not interview uh, intrudes into the right of privacy of another person second is that ai what ai can do that ai can uh, that uh, ai can uh, exclude the personal data of an individual and uh, it is the duty of the software that they if they want to generate certain data from ai they should uh, generate only through the non personal data not the personal data and later on there are certain information of an individuals which are uh, which are under the purview of sensitive data now 
several states several countries impose increased diligence and obligation to or on organization when it comes to the personal data concerning minors or other sensitive information such as criminal convictions medical health or biometric data these obligations can include things like age verification stricter legal grounds processing or even banning the processing so these sensitive data should not be taken by any uh, ai software individual rights and apart from all this the first and foremost right of any individual is that he is having a right to privacy and apart from right to privacy he should have that right that uh if somebody wants to take his data his data can be taken only by his consent without taking his consent if somebody is taking his data that is sheer violation of his rights later on we can see that how ai is impacting our legal system first of all we can see that ai help in such a way that it helps in the legal research also how in legal research if a lawyer or a law student or a legal scholar wants to do research in the legal field he has to analyze n number of journals n number of cases even for the lawyer and then come out with the proper precedent now this thing took uh, for a uh, general research it took around 5 to 6 hours for a particular topic but this thing can be done only within 6 seconds if we start using the ai so apart from as there are two sides of every coin so if there are negative aspects there are positive aspects also that ai can help you in re reducing the time if we want to do legal research second is document automation as it can be seen that various lawyers or legal researchers uh, they need certain documents like for the sale deed or any contract drafting or any other document if uh, there is a certain format which has been fitted in the ai in that case you have to just put uh, mention the different uh, name of the parties and the objective then you can get a proper data or the proper contract or the sale deed i wouldn't won't say that that would be 100% legit but it can be said that it gives you around 85 to 90% ingredients for that particular contract and the sale deed in that case ai is very helpful a third aspect is improved predictive analytics if certain data has been uh, feeded in the ai which uh, ai uh, although ai can also take it from the various online sources in that case the lawyers has to just put his problem and he can get a estimated analysis that what will be analysis of his case in that situation he can frame his argument in that situation only because it is not easy to predict what will happen in any case on in any research but by using that ai he can get a estimated idea and in that case uh, in that situation he can frame his argument for his research in that manner only last is the case management AI can assist in case management also by organizing and categorizing legal documents scheduling hearing and managing deadlines thereby improving the efficiency of legal proceedings apart from all this there are various benefits also as i have told you earlier that AI helps in efficiency also AI streamlines the legal process and reduces the operational time and cost second aspect is about the uh, accuracy it can be said that uh, or uh, ai can work accurately rather than a human being i won't say that they will work that ai will work in a legit way but in the terms of accuracy if i have given certain command to ai then it can be expected that uh, ai will provide me more accurate data comparative to the human mind that is that he will always give you 2 plus 2 always 4 but in uh legal system it can be seen that various time 2 plus 2 is not 4 it can be 3 or 5 i will discuss it later on also third is about the productivity productivity ai boost legal productivity by automating tasks like research and document review expediting decision making improve accuracy and analysis legal professional can focus on complex task while routine work can be handled by ai system as lawyers are having various responsibility so what lawyers can do that they can give their complex uh, they can handle their complex task on their own and they can provide their routine work to the ai just to reduce their time and increase the productivity fourth is the language translation it has been seen in various countries like uh, the litigant is not well versed with the language which is officially accepted by the various courts 
and uh, in in that case litigant cannot understand what judgment court has given if the litigant is not much uh, uh, educate educate or is not well versed with the legal language then ai will help him to translate that legal order or judgment or decree or any sort of proceeding of that court in a simpler language so this language translation through ai is very important aspect in the legal design uh, through this ai fifth aspect is of access to justice access to justice some, there are certain people who cannot afford lawyers there are certain people who belongs to marginal society a marginal class society so they are not able to engage a lawyer for them ai, uh, AI is very important because ai will provide them a not 100% correct response to their query or their dispute but they will but it can provide him an idea that what will be his uh, what will be the judgment or what will be the order to his particular problem like in india i just want to add one more thing that in india as per our indian constitution we have provided this concept free legal aid i am not well versed with the other countries constitution that whether this free legal aid aspect means that if the litigant is not financially uh, uh he is not financially sound then he can take assistance from the state government and state government provide him a lawyer without charging any fees and even litigant has not to pay a single amount of money in the court for this whole case except there is very minimum amount for the summons and other thing otherwise there is no need to pay fees and is all expenses is borne by the state only so in that case where this concept is uh, not followed by any uh, judicial system in that case ai can help him to get the justice at very minimum cost for there are various challenges in the legal world also the first which we have discussed earlier that is about the privacy it, it is uh, when ai softwares are built by the various developers their duty is to please maintain the barrier between the right and uh, information and privacy if they are not maintaining this barrier between the information and privacy ai will start intruding into the privacy of the individuals apart, apart from this there should be some regulatory compliance if ai uh is been implemented in the uh, uh in a legal system or uh, in any country's legal system there should be some regulatory compliance current legal frameworks may struggle to keep pace with the rapid advancement in ai technology leading to regulatory gaps and uncertainties regarding the use of ai legal practice because it has been uh, seen in various societies in various countries that if there is not regulation for regulating any work it a uh, person can, can be or a human being can be converted into a criminal person also so this regulation it can be imposed on the human also but what about the regulation on ai so it is the duty or there are certain challenges or duty of the developers and challenges on this uh, ai that there should be some proper regulatory compliance third aspect is transparency and accountability the thing which comes into our mind when we are uh, generating some data from ai is that whether that data is proper or not or what if the ai has given you some data which is not proper now who is accountable if we see that in case of company if com company has committed any fraud we can uh, accuse or we can allege that the directors of that company would be liable but what about ai if i start blaming the uh, uh, the software developers who have made that ai that because of you this fraud or this uh, uh, issue has been generated because, because there is uh, because uh, and uh, through your software only that the, the, there is a forged data generated from this ai now the person will clearly say that first of all i have made the coding but this data has been generated only by ai now whether ai can be held responsible now this is the issue which needs to be addressed properly if we want to inculcate ai in our legal system because ai is working as per the a uh, code which have been inserted by the software developer but ai can generate certain things on his own and when he generated on his own certain things who is accountable for that so the, uh, the this is the third challenge which can be seen in case ai is if, if ai is implemented in legal system last is dependence on technology it can be seen that the due to various economic disparities each and every country is not 
that much uh, financially sound that they can make each and every individual to acquaint with the technology and if any person is not acquainted with the technology he cannot take the benefits of the ai so the fourth challenge if uh, fourth challenge for the uh, uh, fourth challenge if we implement ai in legal system is the technology barrier if person is not acquainted with the technology he cannot take the benefits of the ai there are certain judicial overview also over this ai where i have seen uh, i have taken some cases so one is from india and other are from some foreign countries first of all machine learning cannot be taken as excuse to break the law the data used to improve algorithm must be lawfully collected and lawfully retained now what happened in this case of campbell versus acufrost music in this case the court held that protection would strengthen if the work is transformative we will pro provide protection to the ai output only if it is transformative now what do you mean by word transformative transformative means that the content should be uh, that content should have some innovation so change some it should have some new things if it supersedes the original creation or add something new rather than merely being expressive if ai has taken the data or analyzed the some data from some previous resources now if the uh, now if ai is just expressing that data that cannot be taken uh, that cannot be accepted because trans there should be a transformative thing that is that ai should come up with something new which supersedes the existing data if uh, if there is x data in the ai in, uh, x data is being input in the ai and ai is just giving the x only then it is not acceptable ai can analyze the x but it should it should come up uh, to y just not highlight the x but it should take the uh, help of x and come up with conclusion y second case is what andy warhol versus goldsmith very important judgment of if not wrong it is of 2022 and 23 of us court what was in this case the dispute arose over whether warhol's work constituted fair use of goldsmith original photograph or whether they infringe upon the copyright in april 2019 a federal judge in the new york ruled that warhol's use of goldsmith's photograph the issue was of a photograph that the person clicked the photograph and he has allowed the other person that you can use that photograph for a year for a particular purpose but what the person did that he start misusing that photograph or used for some other purpose to which the person has not initially authorized so that is the sheer violation and the court has said that court determined that warhol's work were substantially similar to the goldsmith's photograph and did not add enough original expression to warrant in under the ambit of fair protection the third case is of anil kapoor versus simply life india the court issued injunction that is stay against the use of artificial intelligence to create fake mocked fake mocked con uh, uh, content without for some commercial purpose without taking the consent of the person the, as i initially told also that this act of morphing the content is the new uh, i would say as a disadvantage of an ai which can be seen in various uh, uh, it can uh, and it is again and this such a morphing thing uh, intrudes the right of privacy and also it comes under the ambit of defamation also and in this teller versus peril motor case the us district court of the district of columbia recently upheld the a final refusal by the us copyright office to register a hair court uh, the us court refused to register the visual work which has been come up from some ai because they said that only humans can become author but ai cannot become an author later on the uh, second last aspect is which is question nowadays in every society that whether ai can replace the lawyer now this is very important concept that how ai can replace the lawyers or whether it can be done or not so upon this i have very firm views that ai cannot replace lawyer for this i have some uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> as some points also the first is ai can only assist lawyers but ai cannot direct the lawyer i think much of you will agree on this point also that 
we as in every society in every judicial system we get various precedents from the previous judgments and by taking note of those precedent we apply those precedent in our future decisions so what if i have put all those precedents in our ai and now i will just type a problem and by analyzing all those precedent ai can provide me that uh, your judgment uh, will of uh, your, you will get this judgment as by analyzing the previous judgment but the issue is that in judicial system there is which i have told you earlier also that always 2 plus 2 is not 4 waste time it has been seen in various judicial systems that on the same fact judge has given one judgment and tomorrow on the same fact judge has given some different judgment because judiciary or uh, law has one important aspect that is emotions without seeing the situation of the person and without analyzing in which circumstances he has committed the offense what were his uh, what were his prior criminal record we cannot provide judgment but ai lacks in this thing that ai will work as per your precedents only if if ai start generating its own data it is not 100% correct that the data or that judgment is uh, is uh, provide justice to the person or to the litigant or not second aspect which i want to connect with this uh, thing is that is human judgment and creativity legal decision making often requires human judgment empathy and creativity which ai lacks lawyers interpret laws consider case precedent precedents and navigate ethical dilemmas in ways that involve subjective reasoning client relationship and counseling various cases can be decided only if there is relationship between the lawyer and the party and the lawyer and the client is good Uh, in uh, basically in cases of uh, uh, family disputes various cases can be decided only if lawyer provides assistance to the uh, litigant and uh, to the to both the parties as to live in a happy manner but if this aspect is uh, taken by the ai it is possible that the judgment will not be as per the principle of natural justice or it not provide the justice to the uh, both the parties lawyers build a relationship of trust with their clients understand their unique circumstances and provide personalized advice and counseling ai may enhance efficiency in handling routine tasks but it cannot replace the human element of client interaction and understanding ethical and professional relationship lawyers are bound by certain ethical codes and professional standards that encompass confidentiality loyalty to clients and impartiality AI may raise ethical concerns regarding the data privacy bias and accountability which requires human oversight and regulations apart from all this legal advocacy and representation advocacy in court rooms and negotiation tables involves persuasion storytelling and adapting to dynamic situations all of which requires human skills and judgment where AI can assist with legal research and case preparation in a effective uh, and for effective advocacy but this thing of but ai lacks in the human institution and communication abilities and in the last if we put ai into legal regime there is a basic ingredient in every judicial system that is the concept of oath the witness or the lawyer is bound by oath in uh, in judicial system but if ai is giving you certain advice ai is not bound by the oath so if ai is giving you some wrong advice or some misleading advice we can not held ai lack and in the last i just want to conclude by saying that if we want to include ai in our present legal design the first thing that is necessary is to establish a independent council which will take care that which ai uh, softwares can be given permission and which ai software should not be given permission because there is a need for a proper check and if there is no proper check ai can as my previous speakers have told that ai can take a such a um, uh, face which uh, which can even destroy the lives of individuals second aspect is about the accountability we should make certain uh, princ- uh, accountable principles uh, and making the directors or the uh, uh, the developers of that uh, website that if 
ai should work within a uh, within a specified manner and if ai is providing some information misleading information then for that the, the developers would be liable for that by by making developer liable we are just putting an embargo on the uh developers that they should not that they should limit the processing of the ai that in such a that ai should not start violating the rights of another person and should provide the information which is only correct not false information third is transparency there is need for effective transparency and cyber security protocols involving the disclosure of data and ensuring the right to in the uh, in uh, as per the indian in, as per the indian laws also the newly act of direct digital personal data protection 2023 there are certain check which has been put uh, upon the uh, various websites if they are taking some digital data and in the last and for and last is for the penalty for infringement if it has been seen that any of the ai software is uh, doing any act which is infringing the right of individual then for that the developers of that uh, ai would be liable or that software would be liable by this i just want to conclude by stating just one or two lines that is that ai is very helpful but ai is just like a soldier which is not being controlled and if that soldier is not being controlled it can destroy the whole society so it's our duty of the developers who are making ai that we should make ai in such a way that they should have certain restrictions and regulation without distinct regulation ai is very dangerous and in last that artificial intelligence is not a substitute for human intelligence it is a tool to amplify human creativity and ingenuity thanks to all of you for uh, hearing me patiently and i am welcoming if anybody is having any questions uh thank you very much mr ishan for such a comprehensive yes, and engaging discussion um if there are yes sir Uh, this is uh, Zafar Kalanari, attorney at law here. Uh, yes, I couldn't sir. agree more that uh, use of AI is now uh, requirement of the time, and use of technology is also required. Uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis these virtual court concept, which is a new phenomena around the globe now. But I am uh, commenting and also asking you a few things. Since we are dealing with judicial system. and you know all the communication and all the data which is on the judicial system is privileged there is a concept of privacy one these uh, websites or these providers who are providing this uh, software for that is vulnerable to cyber attack it is it has happened numerous times in pakistan in my part of the world our supreme court uh, website was hacked we rescued it later on and now the, these human rights violations which are going on since last couple of years uh, people are recording and they are preparing fake videos uh, we have no remedy to that i was wondering whether in india you have a code of conduct of uh, for these ai providers there has to be one and ethics code that has to be there then you know there are so many other issues like uh, cryptocurrency issues use of this plastic money which is uh, misused uh, around the globe these days and then intellectual property rights you rightly pointed out uh, what is the remedy where to go where jurisdictions provide for uh, the remedy of all this and this is a, a thing which is to be taken very seriously on end of the day i tell you wherever it has happened like uh, uh, singapore who are Uh, miles ahead of anyone else in uh, in this world they took 20 long years to introduce this ai or technology into their legal system and it has taken like 15 years for england to uh, partly involve you know this uh, technology into their system special in case management it is very useful and they all, always introduce it by way of pilots in a class of cases this cannot be across the board and you know most of the lawyers not are not computer literate either 
so there have to be centers who provide you this facility uh, you were talking about you know, translating the uh, language uh, in my legal system a thing has to be done it should be done in that particular manner or not at all we have to use those tech, uh, those particular phrases and uh, there ought to have some templates also so all this requires a lot of effort how can we introduce it across the board in one go uh, i believe this is something which is very new at the moment i personally am not even comfortable with this video link here and which is happening in pakistan i am treated like a second fiddle uh, arguing a case before a judge uh, is a different ball game especially recording of evidence you know where i am master of my own things i have the witness before me uh, what if he is taking help from some powerpoint and he is being tutored that way uh, uh, this is not allowed so all these all these are questions to ponder upon and we need to make a research on them yes sir i totally agree with your view point that this ai is very dangerous i totally agree with you i'm not denying from this fact even i have told in my ppt also and uh, pertaining to any statutory regulation in india there is particular an act which, which i have told you i mentioned digital data protection act in 2023 we have come up with this it, uh, uh, act which is just putting an embargo or just checking about the the digital data privacy should be there and nobody is allowed to take that data from any social networking website or from anywhere else and by uh, as you have said that uh, uh, it is very dangerous i agree that it is very dangerous but as you have seen uh, that it's upon you that how you want to choose some uh, thing i want to choose some article like uh, if i am um, uh, uh, we can take an example that if i am having a knife then i am using that knife in my kitchen or i am using that knife to kill somebody like in a criminal law as i have done my master in criminal law only a knife can be used in a kitchen a knife can be used to kill somebody now it's upon you that how you want to use it ai is giving you a platform to uh, to decrease your time and work efficiently but it's upon the person only as you have said that somebody has even hacked the website of supreme court it is really a threat on the democracy or on the uh, sovereignty of the country that how somebody can do this so uh, for this only there is a need of proper statutory regulation that we should make certain people liable and the third thing which is very important which you have discussed also that it is not that like in offline crimes we can arrest person directly but in case of online crimes we cannot arrest the person directly because if we don't even know that who has committed the crime because what they did they have created an ai or any software and by taking the path of or by taking the shield of that uh, software they are committing certain crime so for this only there is need of proper expert committee who can analyze that from where this offense has been committed and make certain personal liable who have intruded into the right of privacy of any person or who have also violated others other people are much into ai because they because they see that ai is the new weapon and they can uh, misuse it rather than using it so it's necessary for me and you and for all other legal scholars and the lawyers that we should acquaint this ai as much as we can so that we can pro uh, protect the rights of our uh, litigants because if uh, you are not acquainted with ai and if you are a lawyer and somebody comes to you and take advice on this ai first of all you would not able to help him and when we become lawyers we take oath of the justice and when we can do justice only after we are knowing that aspect if i am not knowing that if i am not read the criminal law and a person comes to me and ask me that i have committed this crime or somebody else has committed crime against pay not i am want your help now if i am not well versed with the criminal law how can i help him in that case it is our implied duty that we have to acquaint with this ai and start focusing on the positive aspects of this ai and educate our citizens our country our uh, people in our society to do not misuse it and by making certain statutes we can make them uh, uh, we can deter them that if you use uh, misuse it they would be liable for certain monetary punishment or for certain other penal punishments
thank you mr shan for joining us and for your valuable contribution thank you very much um thank you now we would uh, move on to arithmetic presentation session uh,